Hey, Ukraine. What? Are we, are we seriously gonna get into this now? Get into what? Uh, I don't know, haven't you been watching the news recently? Oh yeah, and how incredibly biased it is? Bi bias? I mean, coming from the state-controlled media empire with UN representatives that accuse the West and Ukraine of using genetically enhanced combat mosquitoes against Russia? I mean, not like biological warfare is a new thing. Look, we're at war right now. I shouldn't even be talking to you. Okay, first of all, special operation, not war. Second, oh, so now you just wanna stay quiet and just listen to your little NATO friends that say they care so much about you when half of them probably couldn't even pinpoint Ukraine on the map before all this happened. Special operation, are you kidding me? You mean the one where you said you were gonna free us Ukrainians from all the neo-Nazis that rule our country? Yeah, because your country is run by neo-Nazis and fascists. Zelensky is literally Jewish descended from Holocaust victims and you're calling him a Nazi. There were Jews sympathetic to the Nazis in World War II as well, and plus it's not like he's a super devout practicing Jew. You guys literally just call anything you don't like a Nazi or a fascist. Yeah, because we fought against Nazis and neo-fascists so we know how to call them out. Well then you're just really bad at it. Oh, don't act like you're so sweet and innocent. Your country was riddled with corruption since independence and your politicians have been known on record for numerous bribery scandals involving oligarchs and the mafia. What was it, in 2018 the Council of Europe even listed you as like the most corrupt country in Europe? Yeah! After you being number one. Yeah, we've had our corruption and drama. Thankfully, we're going through a corruption purge right now. In any case, most of our corrupt leaders were tied to former Soviet nomenklatura, which tied back to you anyway. Back to us? You're the one that totally went back on half of the agreements that we made in the 90s after your independence. Lisbon Protocol, Budapest Memorandum, the Russia-Ukraine Friendship Treaty. What are you talking about? You broke them. In fact, part of our agreement was for you to formally acknowledge us and promise to never attack us after we gave our nuclear weapons back to you in the Budapest Memorandum, which quite frankly, frankly may have been one of our biggest mistakes in retrospect. Yeah, never attack except in the case of self-defense, otherwise in accordance with the Charter of the UN, which is why we had to initiate on your attacks on ethnic Russians after the Euro Maiden protests led to anti-Russian sentiments and killings in the Donbas and Crimean regions. Oh, okay, you wanna bring this back to 2014? Okay, you wanna do this? Okay, let's do it. Going back to the Yanukovych years? Yeah, we hated him. He was your little dictator puppet that refused to sign the EU Association of Free Trade Agreement, calling for violent action against the protesters. Some of your people hated him. There were also pro-Yanukovych protests as well, and your government was just as violent against them. Yeah, not at all to the same scale, and then you used this as a conduit to justify your invasions of our east and south regions in the Donbas and Crimea. Yeah, these primarily ethnic Russians wanted us to help. There's a reason they became separatists. I mean, think about it. They didn't like all the corrupt policies that your government was either forcing upon them or neglected upon them, which pretty much started immediately after your independence. Hell, you closed down half of all the state-owned factories in the Donbas, and then they became a gray industrial wasteland. Okay, Yes, in the earlier years, we probably could have put more focus on building those areas up. Pfft, yeah, you could have. But during independence, every single one of those areas voted to become integrated with Ukraine and break up with the former USSR. They became an agreed part of our country. Yeah, there are so many illegitimacies with all those actions, like, like the traitorous Khrushchev who handed over Crimea in 54 from the Russian SFSR to the Ukraine SSR. I mean, there were only like, what, 13 out of the 27 members of the Soviet Presidium that were present. It was unconstitutional. Uh, no, it was handed over because it made sense. Our country is literally connected to them via peninsula. We also have a much longer history and culture tied into that region with our Zaporizhian Cossacks that interacted with the locals when they were under the Tatar Khanate. I mean, guys, can I say something? I mean, most of us ethnic Tatars were deported during the Soviet... Just, just, not not now. now. I mean, how can you even call it your country when you neglect it and the people want separation calling us in? That doesn't mean it's your country. I'm not claiming it's my country. I'm saying that it's a region that is asking for our intervention to separate from you. Okay, first of all, no, not everybody in those regions were asking for your intervention. Second, even if they were, that's not your prerogative to intervene or invade. You agreed to accept our borders upon the memorandum and it's still our country. Yeah, is it really though when you become the suspiciously aggressive one by disregarding our diplomacy by entertaining agreements with the neo-colonialists like the EU and NATO? I'm the aggressive one? When did I ever attack you? Not directly me, but you agreed to give all citizens, regardless of nationality or other differences, equal rights and freedoms, which you've denied many in the Donbas, so we take that as breaking the Belojeva Accords. Plus, you're really cozying up to those neo-imperialists, the NATO and the EU. They want to make you their little slave, especially after all the war debt that you'll incur. Who's to say that they won't try to make you attack us? Pfft, seriously, suddenly now you want to act like you're some kind of advocate for equal rights amongst marginalized groups? Oh, but in this case, you would because they're ethnic Russians, so that makes sense. Secondly, seriously, you really think I would attack you? Yeah, they broke the agreement during the Gorbachev-Bush meetings in which NATO was not to expand any further east after the unification of East and West Germany. Now they've completely completely encroached upon our territory, even touching our borders in, like, the Baltics. How is that not concerning to you? That actually wasn't part of the agreement. Okay, although the thought was brought up and talked about, there was no statement
statement or paperwork solidifying or agreeing upon that claim. Please bring it up if you would like. Show us. Show us where in the statements does it say that it's not allowed. Plus, every member of NATO voted to join and was assessed by the current members. Nobody was forced to join NATO. And quite frankly, most of the Warsaw Pact knew what it was like to be under your sphere of influence and switched right away. What do you think that says about you? You were pretty much in the same boat as us. And at the end of the day, NATO hates us. And they keep creeping closer and closer. I mean, how do you think the U.S. would feel if we had bases in Mexico and Canada surveilling everything and pointing missiles at their direction? They would probably react aggressively too. And you are getting closer to them. One day, we truly believe the West wants to attack and take over Russia. It's already evident in the NATO expansion. We're pushed up against the wall. Oh my goodness, you're actually trying to victimize yourself right now. Okay, you are paranoid, clearly. Really? Because we know what it's like to dissolve and give the West a chance. We tried that in the 90s and it blew up in our faces. Everybody in the West was like trying to pick at Russia like vultures on a dying corpse. We were struggling and suffering at the hands of the supposed fake smiling West. And soon, you will too. We do what we do and say what we say because you don't know what you're getting yourself into. I know what it's like to be under you for 400 years and at this point anything is better. This isn't even about 2022 or 2014 or 2008 or 1991, is it? <laughs> yeah, first thing I can agree with you on. Ultimately, why are you acting this way? Just so against us. Because it's like you don't even see us as Ukraine. It's like you just see us as like an extension of greater Russia. Yeah, well, I mean, the Treaty of Pereyaslav in 1654 kind of meant something. It was kind of like a big unifying moment. Well, yeah, on paper, our Ukrainian Cossacks pledged allegiance to the Tsar of Russia during all those complicated wars with the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. That didn't mean we lost our sense of being Ukrainian. Yeah, but we are East Slavs. We're all descended from the same ancestry. We're supposed to be family. But th th you can't just say that. Yes, we have the same roots, but you guys went off and became something completely different. Oh my god, yeah, like minute, minuscule differences. Uh, no, like an entire plethora of differences. For one, we speak a different language. Yeah, within the same East Slavic branch of languages related to ours. You guys can barely understand us when we talk. In fact, we have more mutual intelligibility with the Polish language than with yours. Yeah, thanks to all those loan words that the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth put on you, which worked out so well in the past. Seriously, like, even culturally and, like, even phenotype-wise, you guys have had more cultural roots related to the Uralic and Ugric peoples, whereas we are more like Pannonian Basin, Eurasian, Steppe Western European influence. Okay, so yeah, you had Zaporizhian Cossacks, we had Don Cossacks. Your Vishivankas look similar to our Rubakas. Your Petri Kivka painting style is basically our Jostovo. Yeah, and where do you think you got half of all that stuff from? A lot of that was just stuff we started. Hell, people think borscht is a Russian dish. Fabergé eggs were basically just inspired from our Pisanki designs. Let's just be honest though, from an outside perspective, most people couldn't even tell us apart. Yeah. Yeah, because you spent centuries russifying everything you came in contact with. Most of the republics didn't even have a choice and many of their populations were either displaced or don't even get started on the Holodomor. Okay, yes, we know that the Stalin years were messed up and most Russians acknowledge that, but we have to go back to the roots. No, 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 you, you can't just keep throwing the East Slav Brotherhood thing. It's like from the very onset of your Muscovia or proto-Russian identity, it's like your leaders frivolously studied the past and tried to recreate some kind of like new Roman empire. You even put a version of the Byzantine double-headed eagle on your coat of arms and the word czar is just a derivative of Caesar. It's like we all started in the same place but then you guys just went off and became this huge monster. We are not the monster. The West is the imperialist and we fear that they will just make you more and more of our enemy as they take your life away from you. You fear that they will take life away from us? I mean that's a whole other discussion but I mean honestly it just kind of seems like your whole position is about regretting political decisions made in the past and deciding to delegitimizing them and wanting to go back on what was already established. Because sometimes you have to to fix what was wrongly established. It was never broken. Yes, it was. <sighs> so like, can you guys like ever be friends again?